Chronication, and welcome to day 33. All month long, we're talking about humility, and today we have some wonderful examples of humility. It teaches it through and through, but before we jump into that, why don't you repeat the definition after me? Here we go. Repeat it. Humility, putting others first, by giving up what you think you deserve. It's very important for us to be learning this, and so we have a couple of videos, and then in the end, let's see, today's game, I'm gonna try and stump Andrew with some more Bible trivia, but this time we're gonna play if it's Disney or Bible. It should be interesting. Let's jump into our first video. Hey everybody! I'm Jake. I'm really sorry if I look or sound funny today. My shirt's really tight, and I'm afraid if I breathe out, I'll pop a button. I gotta breathe. <sighs> today, I'm gonna talk to you about humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. One of the ways I like to put, <clears throat> one of the ways I like to put others first so you're probably thinking that the smart thing to do would be to change shirts. Well, I already tried that, but none of my shirts fit today, or any of my clothes. At first I thought maybe I had gained a little weight. I mean, I have been eating a lot of mustard-filled donuts lately, but even my shoes don't fit, and I don't think I gained any weight in my feet. Almost got it, almost. Or my head. I don't know what's happening right now. Wait a second. I bet one of my friends is playing another April Fool's Month surprise on me. <laughs> they switched all my clothes with smaller versions of my clothes. Man, that's elaborate. I gotta do something now. That's the rules of April Fool's Month. Somebody does something to me, I've gotta do something back. Something big. Something that's never been done before. I'll put a bucket of confetti over the door. So whoever walks through will get a bucket of confetti all over them. Yeah, Jake, you're a genius. Nope. Easy, boy. So, today's story is about how we should treat people like they're more important than we are. I can't wait to try that after I prove to everyone that I'm the best at April Fool's Month surprises. Yeah. Oh. oh. How many? buttons does this thing have? What is up All Stars and 456? I am so excited to be here with you guys. I really do miss you. Um, today I'm working on Corona Stash week 3. I've got a little bit of something. I hope you guys are enjoying the updates. I'm really keeping it strong. Um, but I wanted to talk with you guys about humility. Um, we've been talking about it for a few days now. I hope you know what it is. But I wanted to talk to you guys about why we need humility. So this is a card tower. I don't know if you ever built one, but they're kind of hard to build. Now we're going to pretend that each one of these cards right here is a person. So maybe that's your mom, and your dad, your sister, your brother, your best friend Billy Joe, Aunt May, Uncle Bobby. Whatever it is, we're going to pretend that these right here are people, and this boop, is you. Now, humility is, um, does anybody remember? Can anybody tell me? I hope you guess it. I can't guarantee. But humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. So, if we're practicing humility, we probably want to be on the bottom, right? We want to let others be on top, and we can, we can help support them. But if we're not practicing humility, and we just want to jump right on top... It makes things hard, right? So basically, when we choose to try and jump on top of everybody else, when we try to put ourselves first, um, we kind of fall, right? There's a there's a verse in the Bible that said, pride goeth before the fall. Pride goes before the fall. So when we are prideful, the opposite of humility, when we try to put ourselves first and think that, you know, we're better than everybody else, it doesn't really work. And in fact, Nobody really wins because you fall, 
and everyone else around you falls. So humility may seem like um, it's not that important that you can still, I mean, do what you want um, and it won't really bother others. But if you look at it and you try and put yourself first, you might make a whole tower collapse. You might make a may, might make your friends feel bad. You might um, hurt your mom and dad's feelings or something like that. So just remember, humility is really important. It's not just about others, but you as well could fall. Um, so just wanted to talk to you guys about humility. I really miss you guys, and I cannot wait to see you guys again. I will see y'all later. Hi, boys and girls. It's sure good to be with you today. And before I forget it, Miss Linda says, make sure they know that I missed them. And we miss y'all too. It is going to be so much fun when we can get back together in our large groups and then break out into our small groups and share, uh, you know, just all the things that have been going on. Uh, I think that's going to be great. How about you? Yeah, I thought so. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a favorite verse in the Bible? I mean, one verse that really just sticks out to you. I'm not sure I have a really favorite verse that I just constantly go to every day. There's so many verses that mean important things to me. When I'm tired, I go to Matthew chapter 11 where Jesus says, come to me. When I'm worried that God will not hear me, maybe I've done something wrong, I go to Hebrews chapter 4 where it says we can boldly go to God's throne and we can talk to Him. When I'm afraid, I may go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 where we find out that fear does not come from God. That's from somewhere else. But then, you know, I got to thinking maybe there is one favorite verse that I really like, one favorite verse that stands out to me. And that comes from the 119th Psalm, and it's verse 105. It says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Well, that's what we need sometimes, isn't it? Especially when we don't know what's going on, unlike some of the times we're living in right now. But you know, maybe it's like this. Maybe you have been out hiking and it starts getting dark and, and the moon hasn't come out good and the stars are not out good and you really can't see and man, you're wondering, boy, what if I step over this log and there's a, a plank there with a nail in it, a step on it, or what if there's a hole, you know, I just can't see really good. And that's what God is saying the Bible is for us. It's a lamp. It's our flashlight. It's a light to our path. But you know, you have to open it up, don't you? I may have a flashlight in one hand, and I may have a flashlight in my back pocket, and I may have another flashlight hanging from my belt. But if I don't turn them on, I'm still probably going to fall, and I'm still probably going to get hurt. So I want to encourage you today to understand that the Bible is a light to your path. It's a lamp for your feet. It helps show you the way. It lightens up everything so that you can see what needs to be done. And then you know all these other different verses, you know, that are in there. But let's hold on to this one. Your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp to my path. So God, we thank you so, so much that you've given us your Bible that helps us find the way when things are not so clear. Y'all have a great time, okay? And hopefully we're going to be seeing each other for too long. I love you. Miss Linda loves you too. Okay, so the bucket of confetti is set. As soon as someone walks through the door, the bucket will fall and they'll get covered in confetti. But let me think for a second because something doesn't quite fit right. I'm supposed to think and act like Jesus did when he was here. Well, how did he think and act? Jesus is like God's only son, but instead of staying in some big heavenly castle, he came here as a baby and then grew up serving people, helping people who are sick, teaching people who wanted to learn. Then he died for us and came back to life. So how did Jesus think? He thought that people mattered a whole lot. And how did he act? He loved and served and gave up everything for people. He gave up what he deserved for me. And you know the rules. Somebody does something for me, 
I've got to do something back. So... So I took the confetti myself, so no one else would have to. I mean, it's not even a big deal. I like confetti. And these aren't even my clothes. Ugh. Sometimes putting others first gets a little messy, but you know what? That's okay. You don't put others first because it's easy. You should put others first because that's what Jesus did for you. That's the one thing I learned today. Put others first because Jesus put you first. I'm gonna say that over and over again so I'll remember. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Love others because Jesus loved others. Like your family, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, your mother, your gardener. Put others first because Jesus put you first. Man, I feel like brand new. It's like putting on a fresh pair of clothes, except clothes that actually fit. Oh, I'm gonna need to change. I am getting confetti in my lungs. See you next time. Alright, Crowdication and Andrew, we're gonna be playing the game, is it Disney or is it in the Bible? The way that it works is there's gonna be a little quote that you will need to read and then vote if you think it's in the Bible or if you think it's in Disney. Bonus points if you can name what book of the Bible and bonus points if you can name which character in Disney named it. Alright, Andrew, good luck. Here we go, Disney or in the Bible? In the beginning, there was only ocean. Oh, Anthem. Cinderella? Grandma. I thought Cinderella may have meant that it was, okay. So I had Disney right, but not the, okay. Only the act of true love will fall a frozen heart. That is frozen. Boom, Disney, okay. Love your enemies. That's the Bible. What book? Oh, this is bad. Um, Jesus says it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Yeah. It's one of those. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity. That's the Bible, and I think that is in Ecclesiastes. I think. Boom! Oh, uh, yeah. Why do you look for the living among the dead? That is in the Bible, and Jesus says that to Mary, I think. Angels. Oh, that's right. It's when Jesus rose. I just, dumb. I thought he may have been in the garden. Okay, remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. That is Lion King. Boom! I am on a roll, Corey. Quick, let me have some of that red stuff. I'm starving. Ugh. That's Disney, but I don't know what. The red stuff? Okay, had it said soup. Okay, that was tricky. You don't have time to be timid. You must be bold, dare. Um, Disney. Boom. I was not sure about that one. The truth needs to be found, otherwise there is no future. Huh, I have no idea. Disney? Disney. God, that was a lucky guess. Whew. The flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. I don't know. The Bible, I have no idea where. I was wrong. The end. Man, that one, that was tough. Um, I'm curious to see how you Disney watchers did and how well you guys know your Bible stories. All right, I will see you guys later.